Hi there, this is Madison Milan, and um, I am going over my public policy mind map. So this was my mind map from the beginning of the um, course that we took. And um, surprisingly enough, the things that I said are things that we actually learned about. And um, I truly thought I had no idea what pu public policy was at all, and I was really pulling these from thin air. So. Um, I have completely updated my mind map now and changed um, the organization of it and what I've learned. So I'm going to go over that right now. Um, so the first thing that has to deal with public policy is the purpose. So why do we go to school? Um, and I really tried to put these into smaller pieces because there's so many um, things you could say about each section. So for the first thing for purpose I wrote about was that in the original first purpose to go to school was to learn how to read the Bible. Um, it was for religious aspects. And then um, people like Thomas Jefferson said, you know, we need um, our citizens to be educated in order to vote. If we want this to be a democracy, they need to be more educated. So then we started thinking about how can we use school in different ways. Um, today, there are two different types of purposes of going to school. We have manifest function, which, which are your obvious reasons. Um, we want to learn facts. We want credentials. You know, we want that certificate that says we graduated high school. Um, we want to boost our economy. In order to do that, we need um, people to have the education and the credentials to say that they have, you know, the certain knowledge to get jobs. We also have latent functions, and those are your um, reasons and purposes that are not so obvious like creating an order in your community. You know, everyone's going to work. Everyone's going to school at the same time. Um, it, we're training our students to become nine to five workers, and we're also showing them how to be in social groups. Hopping over to how are schools governed. So who's in charge of schools? Um, and this was a big section for me that was completely new. I had absolutely no idea about who was really in charge of who. Um, so really three different groups are in charge of education and how they're governed. The federal government um, has little power, but and they give money to different states, but that money comes with strings attached to it. We have the state, and their main goal is to set policies, and they are policy makers, they are advocates, making sure that all children are getting a, an equal education, and they act as liaisons. We also have a local government. And um, those are your local school districts, your school boards, and your superintendents, and they create goals and action plans. But their main thing is to enact those policies. So, for example, if a state says a student, in order to graduate high school, a student must do A, B, and C, the local the local government then will say, okay, this is the curriculum we're going to write in order for all students to achieve A, B, and C. Okay, moving over to influence. So who has influence in education? There are some different groups here that have some influence. Um, global organizations have influence. Non-governmental groups, which like people who are really passionate about gun rights and animal rights. Um, private foundations, you have florent, I always mix that word up, philanthropists. Um, also teacher unions and policy makers. Influencers, um, is a really touchy topic because there are many people who have influence in education but have absolutely no educational background. So the influencing section gets difficult and touchy for a lot of people. Moving over to money. So um, money is really interesting in education and how it's dist distributed. So first of all, um, looking at Pennsylvania, we have 3% of our funding is coming from the federal. That is huge to me. I did not realize it was that little amount and percentage of money. Um, 34 is coming from the state, 57 is coming from local, and 6% comes from other. So this shows you in Pennsylvania just how much they're dependent on their local communities to support their schools. That is a extremely hard problem because... Um, your wealthy school districts can obviously afford to give money and taxes to support their school, but your poor school districts and your poor communities are not going to be able to give the same amount of money. So once again, we're in the situation of we have these school districts who are rich and who can get their students you know, these amazing opportunities with great um, resources and materials and pay their teachers great, 
But then you have other districts who can't afford to pay teachers great, so they don't get great teachers, they don't have resources and things like that. So we have two students who are both in ninth grade, but at dramatically different points in their life and um, at dramatically different, you know, in their credentials saying that they did this, you know, they're at different points. 90% of money is spent on people costs, so spending for salaries and things like that. Your economic status, um, so like this coming school year, depends on your funding, your funding for school. So if the, ec the economy is not doing so great, your school might not get as much funding that year. So this coming year will probably be a little difficult. Um, depending on, you know, each school district gets so much money depending on attendance. So that has tried to be changed, you know, th and um, thinking of different, you know, but what about our poverty or what about our students who have A scores and things like that? Those are different reasons why students aren't coming to school. Um, this has only a little bit of an impact on, you know, how much money is given. So attendance is still over 90% of, you know, the, the reason that some schools get their, how they get their funding. We have voucher schools. So, um, you can choose as a person to go to your own school choice, like a charter school or a private school. Um, and your school district will take the money that it would cost for you. You know, each school gets some money per student, what they spend, and then it goes to a different school for you to go there. Um, I have my own personal opinions about this. I feel like um, if we feel like our, our public schools are failing, why are we get taking money away from them? Why aren't we focusing on what the failure is itself? And why are we not focusing on helping that public school um, flourish? Because they are there for all students. Um, the question came up of does money matter? And that came up in our textbook. In my opinion, it does. If we have money, if school districts have money, we're able to pay teachers better. You're able to get better teachers. You're able to get better resources, better materials and then better experiences and education overall. And lastly, when it comes to money is textbooks are outrageously priced and only 6% of schools use open free resources. So again, we're spending money all the time on educational resources that maybe you aren't even truly using in depth. So most important to know, in my opinion, money and how it's spent because you need to know, you know, what is your district spending their money on? Um, what is our country spending their money on? How much money are we getting from our state? That's a huge um, chunk of money that we're depending on our local communities to give to our schools. Um, I think it's important to know about unions. You need to know who's there to support you, who can help you get your voice heard. Also, how is our schools governed? I think that's really important because to me, that was something very new. And also who is in charge of who? So um really our state has ultimate power but our local school districts make a lot of decisions that are um very specific to that district i think that's really important and then that, that stays new information for me i could pretty much say this entire course was new information for me but the most um eye-opening experiences were when i was learning about the money situation about how much money we get from where in my opinion we were getting almost 75% of our money was coming from the actual um, national government. And that is completely not what the choice is, not what the case is at all. And how things are governed. Um, I wasn't completely aware of the different roles that the federal government played versus state versus local. Why should educators understand the system? Um, it's super important to know how education works, especially if you work in it. And I feel like we complain so much about you know, there's people who make decisions and policies for us but have no idea what education is. It's the exact same way. Um, flip side, I feel like if we want to have a voice and um, we need to be educated in our system and we also need to make sure that we um, understand our system well enough to know, you know, who makes decisions. That way, when it comes time for voting, you're voting for the person who you want, who you support and in their um, ideas that because it directly affects you. What is the system's impact? Um, yes, the educational system has lots of impacts, but I chose the one that I felt like was the most important to me. 
and it is wealthy districts seem to keep growing and the poor districts continue to not get the support that they need. Um, so back to this whole idea of money that the state is getting only giving 34% of money and 57% comes from local. That is just a huge eye opener that even if every single person in our state was given 34% of the budget, the same amount of money, um, not even can thinking about attendance, you're still depending on 57% from your local. So schools in inner city Philadelphia are not going to raise and get as much money from taxes as a school in a really wealthy um, rural area. So it's really important to think about, you know, how can we get um, better situational funding for different schools? That way we have all students can get the same amount and the same opportunities as others. And how can we create level playing fields? Or we're always going to be faced with something um, like systematic racism where we cannot create those equal opportunities for all students. So that was my um, biggest impact that I got. And these are my resources. Thank you so much.